Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this particular video, we will learn about a technique called trig bashing or trigonometric bashing. And as usual, we will learn this strategy using a problem from a mathematical competition. In this case, American math competition, AMC 12. Now, whenever you see the word bashing, what it essentially means is you have to use tools and formulas and techniques from that area of mathematics quite intensely with a lot of calculations in most cases to finally solve the problem. Now, I personally do not like bashing that much because I more like intuitive problems. I love problems which can be solved using very little tools. But in certain situations, these can be very handy. So let's see what problem is this. It says that we have a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD. These two sides are equal. Both of them are 3 centimeters long. And AD is 5 centimeters long. Okay. And this angle is 120 degree. That's the given information. You can draw the picture, pause the video or draw the picture to follow along. Okay. The question is to find the shorter diagonal of this cyclic quadrilateral. So how do we go about it? There are several ways to do this problem, but since we want to learn trig bashing, I will be using mostly trigonometric techniques. So let's, as the first step, let's join the diagonals, both of the diagonals, and do a little bit of angle chasing. So first notice that this is an equilateral uh, isosceles triangle because these two sides are equal. So let's call this angle theta. Then this is theta. And then we can use the property of cyclic quadrilaterals that angles in the same arc, angles subtended by the same arc are equal. So this arc subtends this angle at the circumference. Similarly, it subtends, subtends this angle. So this is also theta. Similarly, this is also theta because both of them are subtended by this arc BC. So this is also theta. So fun fact, AC is the angle bisector of angle A. It's crazy. Okay, so how are all of these things useful? After all, we want to find out the two diagonals. So the first diagonal, which is AC, we want to find this out and this is actually much easy to find. And then we will find out PD. What is AC? We can use the cosine rule. So what is the cosine rule? So cosine rule is this. If you have a triangle, Let's say this side is x, this side is y, this side is theta. Then just by knowing this information, you can compute the third side. And if you think intuitively, this makes sense. Because if the side is x, the side is y, and you know the opening, the angle between them, how much wide or narrow this is, then certainly you can find the third side. So what is the formula? The formula is the third side. I write it like this because that's how I remember it. Third side square is x square y square minus 2xy cosine of theta. This is the um, cosine rule. Sometimes I think about it as the extended Pythagoras theorem. For example, if theta is 90 degree, then this part will be gone because cos 90 is 0 and then you get the traditional Pythagoras theorem. So how do we use the Prath cosine rule? Well, in this triangle, we know that this is 5, this is 3, and this is 120. So uh, an easy calculation will show that AC square is equal to 3 square plus 5 square minus 2 times 3 times 5 cosine of 120. Now cosine 120 is a negative half. So 9 plus 25 minus 2 times 3 times 5 times negative half 
So we have 34 plus 15, which is 49, which tells us that AC is 7. Awesome. It's a whole number. <laughs> so AC is 7. Great. Part of the job is done. What is BD? How do we go about BD? So since we are using a lot of trigonometric tools, let's use the sine rule. The sine rule. Okay. So let me write it. And I'll quickly remind you what the sine rule is. If you have a triangle, let's say this is A, this is B, this is C. It is a convention. Most mathematicians write like this. The length of the side opposite to angle A is denoted by small a. Similarly, the length of the side opposite to angle B is denoted by small b. Length of the side opposite to angle C is known as small c. So sine rule says sine A divided by small a equal to sine B divided by small b equal to sine C divided by small c. This is what the sine rule is. Now I'll give you a challenge question from mathematical imagination. Let's see if you can get a good answer. I gave you a sort of intuitive idea why the cosine rule should exist. After all, if you know this side, if you know this side, if you know how much they're open, you should be able to find the other side. That's the intuition behind why the cosine rule should exist. Can you give me an intuition about why such a sign rule should exist? Not of this particular form, but why should it exist even? So it's, it requires a little bit of imagination, reflection on the subject. And that's the most interesting part of mathematics. You have a bunch of formulas, but then you try to make the sense of it and something beautiful emerges right okay so let's use the sine rule here and we will do it in a clever way so if we apply the sine rule here and if we apply the sine rule here we will get the final answer let's see how so i'll just copy this picture and i will put it here to remove the clutter Okay, so now let's use it in the bigger triangle. I'm interested in sine of theta. So what is sine theta by 3? I'm just using sine rule in this triangle. Sine theta by 3 is equal to sine of 120 by 7. 127. So we know sine theta now. So what is sine theta? Sine theta is... 3 times sine of, sine of 120 is root 3 by 2 by 7. So this is 3 root 3 by 14. Okay. All right. So in fact, we can also use a very simple technique to find out cosine theta. We will need that. So, and this is a very simple way to compute the value of sine, cosine and tan given one of them. Of course, you will still need to know whether theta is an acute angle or an obtuse angle. So, can you give me a reason why theta is an acute angle or why theta is an obtuse angle in this particular case? It's a very simple argument. Theta is acute angle. Why? Can you give me that information? Okay. So, sine theta. Sine theta is root 3 root 3 by 14. So, what we will do is we will put it like this, a right triangle, we'll set up a right triangle. The denominator is the hypotenuse and the numerator is this height. So now we can find out this one, which is um, 14 square, 196 minus 3 root 3 whole square, square root. So this is equal to square root of 196 minus 27. So that is equal to square root of 169, right? 169 and that is equal to 13. I think that's correct. So this is 13, 1, 3. So now we are in a position to find out cosine theta. We are in a position to 
find out tan theta just take the ap appropriate ratio so cosine theta in this case is 13 by 14 13 by 14 okay so that's the cosine theta now let's go ahead and use the sine theta sine rule again in this triangle so notice that this angle is 180 minus 2 theta this is theta this is theta so this is 180 minus 2 theta so what is one sine of 180 minus 2 theta by bd well that is equal to sine theta divided by 3 that's what it is right we are using the sine rule in this triangle this is 180 minus 2 theta by bd and this is sine theta by 3 okay so we will use this let's use this let's copy this thing and put it here so sine of 180 minus 2 theta is just sine 2 theta divided by bd is equal to sine theta by 3 so now we have 2 sine theta cos theta by bd is equal to sine theta by 3 sine theta sine theta cancels cos theta i know is 13 over 14 we have just found it so 2 times 13 over 14 times 3 equals to bd so we have 39 by 7 that is the value of bd and now you can check which one is shorter 7 or 39 by 7 i think you learned uh, quite a few things in this one problem we used trig bashing but we also used a bunch of things from trig normal geometry normal trigonometry there are other ways you can think about of doing this problem if you can find one put it in the comment section maybe we can invite you to our channel so that you can present it all the best keep on doing beautiful mathematics i'll see you in the next one if you're interested in interesting programs on mathematical physics or computer science olympiads school research projects or leadership programs leading up to ivy league universities check the link in the description for our outstanding programs all the best bye